In this lesson, I'm going to show you how I manage self-signed certificates, and I'm going to do that mostly on my server. So I'm going to go over here and open up Rock One. In Rock One, we're going to use Server App to manage our certificates. It wasn't so long ago that the certificate assistant was the only graphical user interface that was used in Mac OS X to manage certificates. But Apple has made it fairly convenient. We can bring up Server App, select our server in the Hardware tab, go into Settings, and then look for the SSL certificate line. Click on the Edit button to the right of that line, and you will get a drop-down window. Very typically, the default settings are such that you will have no certificate for calendar and contacts or for messages but everything else will have whatever your current server's default certificate is. Now, my certificate is rock1.foamingrocks.com, and if I click on that, I get a choice, but I don't want to change it. Note that it does identify each one of these as self-signed. That's just part of the name. We can manage these certificates by going into the Action menu down here in the lower left and clicking on Manage Certificates. Now let's take a look at that rock one foamingrocks.com certificate. This is very similar to what we've seen before in the Safari web browser. I can examine details. Again, there's very few details that are going to be useful here. So we really need to replace this self-signed certificate with one that will also be self-signed but have more details in it. The idea that we have here is the more information that we provide, the more trustworthy our certificate is going to be. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and say create a certificate identity. Now I'm going to want this to be an SSL certificate type. I also want to be able to override some of the defaults. So I'm going to check mark that and click on continue. It does give me an informational message telling me that I'm about to create a self-signed certificate, and it does not provide the security guarantee of a certificate issued by a certificate authority. So we're going to go ahead and continue. Now, the two things that you need to note here on the certificate information screen in the assistant is a serial number and a validity period. What you're going to want to do is create unique serial numbers amongst your certificates, especially those that are signed by the same certificate authority, because this is how Mac OS X will sort and identify and manage those certificates. So you can come up with your own technique. You can use something like monotonically increasing value, like the number of seconds since a certain date or something like that. I'm just going to put in 101 for my serial number right now. And you want to leave the validity period at 365. Most certificate authorities are not going to sign your certificate unless it's limited to one year. I'm going to click on Continue. And then we need to fill in some more information. Now, this is pulling in information from when this server was still a Lion server. So I need to overtype that with a more meaningful email address. And I need to make sure my common name is correct, and it is. And then I need to put in a good organization name. So this is the Foaming Rocks organization. And I'll put in an organizational unit, the city, and a state. Continuing on, we now are asked to choose a key size and algorithm. The defaults here are just fine, so I'm going to click Continue. And then we also need to tell what this SSL certificate will be used for. So we need to make sure that we include the key usage extension and that this extension is critical. And on this screen, we need to make sure that we have checkmarked the include key usage extension, marked that this extension is critical. It will come default with the signature identified, but we also need key encipherment and key agreement because this is going to be used by a server. So I'm going to click on Continue, and then we'll see what looks like nearly the same screen, except that this is the extended key usage. And for here, we need to make sure that SSL server authentication is selected. 
Now, note that mine says any and has some other check marks. That's fine. At a minimum, though, we're going to need the SSL server authentication there. Now I'm going to click on continue, and we're going to include some basic constraints. But this will not be a certificate authority, so we're not going to checkmark that. But it's important to include the basic constraints, but not checkmark the certificate authority. Then we continue on to the next screen. And here we want to put in the DNS name, but very commonly the internal IP address will not match our external IP address. So I'm going to take that out, and then we're going to continue and it's going to create our certificate for us. Now, it does still warn us that this certificate has not been verified by a third party. That's okay. I'm gonna say done. And now we're being asked if we want to store this in our keychain, and I want to always allow access to it. So we are done there. We can, at this point, select that certificate, again, by clicking on Edit, going to the drop-down menu and choosing it, now, how do we tell the difference? Well, if we select the certificate and we look at the information about that certificate by going back into Manage Certificates, we can see which certificate in the list is the one with the more detailed information. All right, so I'm going to cancel out of that, actually. I don't need to choose that SSL certificate just yet. So that's how you can manage your self-signed certificates and give them more detail. We will now need to create a certificate signing request and send that off to a certificate authority. And that'll be up in the next lesson.